Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this morning. We just bless your holy name that you've given us this day to come to your house so that we can worship you. Now we pray for the children as they go to their respective class that Lord, you bless them. You go with them. Uh, you bless their teachers and the young people, the teens. You minister unto them. Thank you that, Lord, you are speaking to them. And we also pray as we remain behind, we, as we continue with our service, we also pray. And I want to pray for myself as I stand to preach. I pray that you, Lord, you will use me, anoint me, and give me more energy and power and anointing. And even those who are going to listen, God, those who are here and those who may be following from home, Father, we pray and we believe that you are blessing us indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a scripture, I have a word of God I want us today to discuss from. And uh, this is uh, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Proverbs 29, verse 18. This is a scripture I want us to discuss today with the few minutes we have. Probably I may have some other scriptures, one or two, but this is the main uh, scripture I want us to discuss and learn from. On Tuesday, this week, when I just woke up early in the morning, this scripture, this verse came to my mind. It came to my soul. And I just wondered from nowhere, it was speaking to my heart, to my mind, that where there is no vision, people perish. Where there is no vision, people die. I didn't know why this verse is coming to my heart. Why this verse is coming to my mind, I didn't know. And when I came back to the office on Wednesday, then I was assigned to preach today. And I was like, now, where am I going to preach from? Where am I going to preach from? And as I was reading the Bible, I just remembered this scripture that it came to me the other day. And I felt like I should study it more and see if I can preach from there. And then God... Thank the Holy Spirit that he gave me the message that we want to discuss today from the very verse, Proverbs 29, verse 18. I had to go through different translations, different versions, and see how the scripture is being uh, said, how it's being studied. And, and I went through different translations, but I came up with a few of them, like four or five. And I want to read them through quickly and Probably, and I, I pray that you'll be following us. I lead one is KJV. This is King James Version, and it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law happy is he. So here there is a red vision, and people perish. And NIV says, Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who hits wisdoms instruction. So this version, the NIV, does not use the word vision. It uses the word revelation. And it doesn't say people perish, but it, they, it says people cast off restraint. People do not again, you know, do not again observe the limits that are being set by, by God. And I, again, I read the, the this is a uh, NLT, New Living Translation, and it says where people do not accept divine guidance, they will learn world, but whoever obeys the law is joyful. This, it says, where people does not accept divine, divine guidance. And again, I read the Amplified Bible. Amplified Bible says, where there is no vision, in brackets, no revelation of God and his word. The people are unrestrained, but happy and blessed is who keeps the law of God in bracket. And the last one, and I think this was more lovely for me, this is the CEV, Contemporary English Version. And it says, without guidance from God, law and order disappear, but God blesses everyone who obeys his law. This was more lovely to me. 
without guidance from God, law and order disappear. It disappears among the people, among the community. So having led through this verse, today I want us to look at the dangers of living without vision. The dangers of living a life with no vision. The risk we may encounter when we live our life without vision. And again, we have read whatever it says, whether the vision, the revelation, the guidance, the divine guidance, whoever obeys that, he said, happy is he. He's having a joyful life. They are more blessed on his way or her way. So I want us to look at the dangers of living without vision. The risk. There are so many risks. There are so many dangers. When as human beings we live with no vision. Because we don't know where we are going. We have no direction. We are just moving anyhow. And so it is very important to have vision in life. Otherwise, we will perish. And you know, the word vision, if we are to define the word vision in a general understanding, we can easily say it is one's ideas, the idea of a person, the good idea you have. Sometimes it, it can be even bad idea. Probably that is your vision. But I want to say the ideas of a person, it can be also said at times to be a vision. The dreams you have. The dreams you have. What do you dream about? It can also be, it can say it to be a vision. The plans you have. The hopes you have. What do you hope for? That's your vision. The revelation you have. What do you see ahead of you? What have you heard from God? What is God is speaking to you? The imagination. What do you imagine in life? What do you imagine for your life, for your salvation? What do you imagine for the future, for the ministry? That can be your vision, the perception, the insight, and the awareness. The awareness you have about life. All those words and many other, they can be at times in a general understanding, be your vision. The vision is the ability to think about or to plan the future with imagination or wisdom. So the ability to think about, think about life, think about, think about your family, think about your faith in God, that can be your vision. That is your vision. The ability to think about the future. What do you see when you think of your future? Do you see success? Do you see prosperity? Do you see sickness? Do you see death? So the way you think about your future speaks a lot. And you should have that vision, that ability to be able to plan, to be able to think wisely. Because it says the future with imagination or wisdom. So when, we, when there is wisdom, we want to believe the plans you are making, the future you are envisioning, it should always be positive because you are using wisdom. You are using common sense you, you think through before you make decision. And that is vision. And based on the different versions, based on the different translations I've brought up, and you can also go lead for yourself at your own time. Lead about the scripture. Proverbs 29 verse 18. Go through different versions if you are able to find them. See how the Bible speaks. But after I have gone through that and I came to conclude what is being said there, what is being reported there in that scripture, it's not only the issues of imagination, not only the issues of dreams, not only the issues of being aware of perception, but to me, the vision, the word vision here stands to be a godly vision. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. When we say where there is no vision, and this scripture, to me, is not a normal vision. It's not a normal plan. It's not a normal wish that we may have as an individual, that we may have as an organization, 
that we may have as a community this to me and this is the fact and it should be the same even to you today and the rest of the days whenever you read there remember that should be the vision of God I mean that should be a God revision a divine vision because it is only the vision of God that makes us alive sometimes there are people with vision they have their own vision for themselves for their family for the community but their vision is leading them to death is leading them to a very short future it is leading them to a very dangerous place but the vision of God a godly vision it is taking us somewhere it is taking us to God a godly vision is taking us to heaven a godly vision it does not lead us into dangers rather it is leading us to a successful life to a life whereby everybody will be saying yes hallelujah thank you god thank you brother thank you sister because that is a godly vision and this is why the bible says where there is no divine guidance where there is no divine guidance where there is no revelation where there is no the word of god the knowledge of god the wisdom of god people perish but he is blessed but he she is blessed and we are blessed if we keep the word of god if we keep the law of god if we keep the instructions that is given by god a vision is an essential thing a vision is an essential too in the life of believers in your life as an individual as a believer in my life as an individual in our life as a family a vision is very critical it's very key as a husband and wife you should always have the same vision because if you have different vision you will get lost you will get into quarrel if the husband is having this vision and he is going this way and the wife is having this vision is going this way you will get into quarrel you will fight <laughs> when we when we we talk to the young people who are about to get married at times i ask them what do you think how many children are you going to have few of them they will say the same number even though they have been in a relationship for a year probably they have been discussing that but still one will say i need four and one will say i need two and then i ask them so what is it what is going to happen they say no me i still believe for four and the other one says no for two then anyway you try to encourage them and guide them and tell them to pray but again we try to encourage them to align together and see that they come to a very common number but sometimes anyway it is god who decide and i give them the example of me and my wife we had planned to have three kids we said okay we have one girl at first the first born should be a girl and we are wow but the second the two they should be boys and that was our argument and we kept praying for that and here we go to a girl we were like oh god is good you wait the next the second one was a girl okay okay good so god has changed the idea then the third one we knew he was a boy and we even thank god oh this is going to be a boy because there are going to be three now this is going to be a boy and i am not sure whether my wife by that time she went for a ultrasound because she never spoke to me if the third one is also going to be a girl so we kept thanking god and we are looking for a name you know a, a name for the boy and i took my wife to the hospital blah 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 and then i went back as i reached back home i was told oh, your wife was delivered guess what was the first question <laughs> what type of a child the boy or a girl and you know that nurse told me you will come and see by yourself and i was like oh god is good so quickly i rushed into the hospital and i entered the room my wife congratulations I was looking what type of a child 
just to realize she is a girl. And you know what? That's why I got the name for my third daughter. I did not want to come pray. I just took a paper and wrote the name of the child and I gave to my wife. This will be the name of the child. The name of the child will be Asante. Meaning, thank you God. Because I thought I was going to complain. Because I was thought I was like going to complain before God. God, why again another girl? And now, in order for me not to complain every day, is to remember this is Asante. Thank you, God. And that's how God works. And my wife kept saying, okay, my husband, we can try again. I said, remember, we had said we need three. And for me, I'm comfortable. She said, let's try again. And I told her, how do you know we are going to get a boy? She said, I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that is why there is a very gap, big gap between Asante and Asim. It's nine years gap. You can see how I was trying to be strong, eh? not to get another baby. But she kept encouraging me. I said, you wait. You know, we are renting a house. We have a few rooms. Probably when we build another house. And she was very clever. She waited for me since we moved it to our house. And once we are there, she was like, now we have a house. We have more rooms. So I said, okay, no problem, my wife. Let's go. <laughs> and here comes another baby girl. Now we have four of them. I, I, and I said, okay, so we have a sin, Asante, so we are going to have a Simwe. It's almost the same name. Now, a Simwe is a bit local, it's a bit a, a, bit, a bit a local name from our languages, and I remember the first person to call me, it was Crispin, and he told me, brother, why did you give your child the name from Bukoba? I said, also, we have that language also from our place, my friend. So we have four. And so I encourage the young people sometimes, you can have your vision, you can have your plan. By the end of the day, it is God who decides. It's God who gives you the vision. It's God who gives you a godly vision. Why am I saying this? We may have our own vision. You may have your own vision for your family. But remember, there is a godly vision. This is what I want us to catch today. And move with a God vision. If we don't move with the God vision, there are so many dangers with our vision we may encounter. And guess what? How happy we are with our four girls. I am so happy. My wife is happy, but I think 85%. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes she reminds me to try again, and I'm like, my wife! <laughs> and I tell her, my wife! Please, we have four girls, and God is good. And I'm happy for that. Thank God she's now coming on our side. But we have not come to a conclusion anyway. We still try to move in a God vision. <laughs> if a God vision is for what my wife is thinking and is having that vision, having that revelation, who am I? I will go for that God vision. But if I'm on the God revision, you should have to follow me. The dangers of living without a God revision. I did not plan to say all this. I am wondering where did they come from. <laughs> vision is seeing who God is and what God is doing or what he's intending to do. When you see what God is doing in your life, when you see what God is doing in your ministry, in your organization, in your family, that is a God vision. When you join what God is doing, when you discover this is what God is planning to do, and this is what God is doing for my life, that's a vision you need to catch and follow. You should not just say, I have my vision. I have written them down. My friend, vision can change at any time. Now, if we wrote down God, our vision is going to have three children. And now we have four girls. Should we hold on that vision? No, 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 no. Probably it wasn't the vision of God. We need to move with the vision of God. The God vision is to see what God is doing. 
without vision we will likely not see bigger picture the whole picture of what god is doing without the vision of god we may not experience the bigger picture of what god is doing in our life without a godly vision we may not experience a real bigger picture of what god is doing at the pc we need to embrace and have a godly vision without vision we cannot find part in a bigger plan of god god has a bigger plan for our life god has a bigger plan for your family if you miss the vision of god you may not be part of that bigger plan that god is having for you without a vision of god without a god vision we may not accomplish much in the kingdom of god the dangers of living without vision the danger of living without a god vision there are so many dangers if we do not catch the vision of god the bible has said the scripture we read with different translations with different versions it is very clear it says where there is no vision people perish where there is no vision people die so this is a very a very dangerous thing when we live with no vision when we do not catch up the vision of god in life when we do not catch up the vision of god in family in the organization in the community as a church what follows is death and this is one of the danger and i want to encourage us today let us live by the vision of god because where there is no vision people perish people die where there is no vision people cast off restraints people do not obey people do not follow limits people do not consider the limit of life where there is no vision a human being does not again observe limits that god has set that the community has set that the church has set why because there is no vision where there is no vision people are unrestrained people are not controlled <coughs> you cannot control the people if they have no vision if there is no vision in the community the vision of life the vision about life if the community does not understand where are we going if the community do not understand why were we created by god we're going to have a difficult community we're going to have a dangerous community because people are not controlled if the church members cannot catch the vision of god if the church members cannot catch the vision of the church it becomes difficult for the ministers in that church to control and lead those members because they do not catch the vision of the church which is the vision of god they may follow their own vision if the vision of the church is a godly vision i would like to remind us today let us follow that vision because it will be easy for us to run the church it will be easy for the senior pastor to run this church if we all follow the vision if the associate pastors follow the vision of the church agrees with the vision of god that god has given to this church it will be easy for us to run this church but if each person comes up with his own or our own vision it will become difficult to be controlled and this is why we are now struggling out there in the community people are not controlled why they have not stand to live by the vision of god where there is no vision people run and become more rough where there is no vision people becomes more rough if we don't catch the vision of the church if we don't catch the vision of god we will be rough people but i want to encourage every one of us not to be rough and we need to catch the vision of god all these are the dangers of living without vision where there is no vision a godly vision people ignore the law and order of life remember it is said where there is no divine guidance where there is no divine guidance the guidance of god the law the order of god are not followed people do not obey the law of god people do not obey the law and the order and the rules that god has set 
through the Bible. When people miss the vision, when the community miss the vision, when the country at that level of a country, when it misses the vision of the country, the vision of the community, the vision and the purpose of God to that country, people will be left. People in the community will not be able to be controlled. <laughs> okay, I used to hear people say, when I was in the US, now it has also come to me. <laughs> now, when I was in the US last month, <laughs> those people on that side, they drive on the light. Eh? Okay, let me make this, let me put this way. They drive the different side where we drive here. And now, when I could see them driving, I was like, ah, these guys, are, they are going to cause accident. Why are they driving on the other side? Just to realize, oh, Kumba, I'm in America. I'm not in Tanzania. Now, those are the law. Those are the orders on how to drive. Now, I've just come from America. I wanted to pretend I was in America, and I wanted to drive my car on the other side. <laughs> what will happen? Accident. I will be taken to the to court. The police will be mad on me. Why? Because there are laws to be followed. There are orders to be followed in the community. And this is what I'm saying. If the church today do not catch up the vision of God, people will not obey the order. People will not observe the law. And remember, if we do not observe the law of God, which is the Bible, if the community today, if we do not follow the Bible, we are going to get lost. Brethren, I want to remind us today, we should not live life without vision. You should not live life without vision. It may not be a bigger vision, but the little vision you have, the small vision you have, that will take you to the destination. The small vision you have to build a house, the small vision you have to buy a car, the small vision you have to establish a family, it will take you to that destination. But if you do not have any vision in your life, soon you will get lost. Because where there is no vision, people die. And these are some of the dangers of living without vision. Some other dangers, if I go ahead, where there is no vision, people look and admire the long thing. Where there is no vision, people admire the wrong thing and not the right thing. People forget the issues of ethics. They want to admire and look at the wrong thing instead of the good thing in life. We can remember a good example is Adam and Eve. God created them, gave them the garden and everything in it. But guess what? Because they lost that vision of God. Because they lost the plans God has given them. They started admiring. Eve started admiring at the long tree. She started admiring at the wrong fruit. While God has given the law and the order of not eating from that fruit. It did not only happen to Adam and Eve. It can still happen to us today. If we do not catch up and live by the vision of God. The danger of admiring wrong things will be on our way. When people live with no vision, they take in long measurement. People make wrong measurement. The readers make wrong measurement. The readers make wrong decisions, regardless of the effect that is going to happen to other people. So long as the leader is being benefited, he is having some benefit there. He or she does not care. The measurement she is setting, how it's going to affect the other people, how it's going to affect the people in the community. Lack of vision. Where there is no vision, people set long measurement, regardless of its effect to the other people, to the community. Without vision, you may leave your wife and run for other wives and run for other people. Without vision, you may run away from your husband and begin running for other men. Without setting, without considering the effect that is going to happen to your wife. Without thinking of the effect that is going to happen to your husband. Imagine if you happen to divorce because you are not faithful to your marriage. And you have four kids like me. And you have four children like me. And here you separate. And here you divorce. 
What is going to happen to your children? Catch the vision of God. The God vision. Because it helps us to make decisions. Right decision. Why are you considering what is going to happen to the other people? But otherwise, people take long measurement. Where there is no vision, people make long assumptions. Wrong assumptions. People come to conclusions which are not wrong. You remember the people, those who killed Jesus Christ. We've been celebrating Easter last week. Those who killed Jesus, they had a long assumption. I was thinking, this guy had a long assumption. They thought when they killed Jesus, they are going to kill the good news. They are going to kill the gospel. Without knowing, that was a long assumption. The dangers can happen. Where there is no vision, people accept wrong results. We can accept wrong results. Where there is no vision, there is no godly vision, people quickly learn and rush into evils without reasoning. People are ready to go and do evil things without sitting down and listen. And again, the dangers of living without vision, and especially godly vision, people in the community embrace long values. Wrong values. People embrace long values. We are ready to embrace long values. Today there is a problem. We all know, we have heard the people speaking, the community is speaking about it. The readers are speaking about when it comes to the same-sex marriages today. It's a problem. Where is it coming from? It is because we are embracing wrong values. They have not been our values. We want to embrace them. They have not been spoken in the Bible. We want to embrace them. Those are the dangers of living without a God vision. I also want to be among of those people who make a challenge. I also want to make a challenge. As a pastor, as a brother, let us do not embrace long values, including same-sex marriages. Those are long values. And many other, where there is no vision, people ignore the truth from God. The today's generation, it is not ready to abide to the word of God. It's falling into the danger of refusing the word of God which is the guideline for believers. Why? People are missing the vision. And this is the vision of God. Where there is no vision, people and community get involved in what God hates. There are so many things God hates. There are so many things God hates. God hates divorce. God is not present with divorce. But people are quickly to divorce easily with no reason. They think it's just a normal thing. You just write the paper and the divorce. No, 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 no. It should not be quick like that. It should not be faster like that. There should be a strong reason. But however, what is a strong reason to make you divorce your wife? What is a strong reason to make you divorce your husband? We can only lash into things that God hates. If you read in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. To 19. There are things there. The Bible says no. God says no. He says there are six things. All seven. God hates. Right. The hands that is ready to shed blood. The heart that is ready to embrace wicked things. The feet that are quickly to lash into evils. A false witness. Imagine. False witness. Spilling conflict in the community. Stealing conflict in the church. Those are the things God hates. Brethren, there are so many dangers we can mention. We can put down that can be caused by people not embracing the vision, living without the vision. I want to encourage us today. We need to avoid these dangers. We need to avoid these risks. Not to get into those risks. Not to die easily because we do not have a vision. Not to misuse the order and what the Bible has said. Just because we don't follow the vision of God in our life. God has a vision for your life. You should not die early. You should not die while you are still young. When the vision of God is not accomplished in your life. We need to be very careful. We need to do our best. We need to do what we can do to live by the vision of God. Praise the Lord. The dangers of living without vision. As I conclude, what should we do then to avoid, to run away from this danger? And I want just to 
bring out two things in line to the scripture we just have laid. And one is, let's live and embrace God's vision. If we want to avoid the dangers of living without vision in our life, in our family, in our community, and even at our church here, we should live and embrace Godly vision. You know what? Embracing Godly vision will rescue us from the danger we have just discussed. It will save us. Remember when you read that scripture, the second part, it says, happy is the one who keeps the word of God. Happy, joyful, blessed is the one who obeys the laws of God. So we need to live by the vision of God. We need to embrace God's vision for it will save us. It will rescue us from that danger. Live and embrace God's vision. It will enable believers to fulfill the will of God here on earth. God has a plan for us here on earth. It is until we embrace his vision. It is until we live by the vision of God. It is when we will be able to accomplish the will of God here on earth. Remember, God has a vision for humankind. He wants to save us. He wants to deliver us from the bondage of sin. God wants to take us to heaven. That's the a, that's a climax of the vision of God for human beings. That's the climax of, of the vision of God. What will really it help us have a bigger church, have a bigger crowd, have a bigger follower if these people are not walking according to the line of the vision of God, which is going to heaven? Brethren, let's work hard. I know it's not easy. We all struggle. Despite that I am a pastor, we are pastor, we also struggle. But let's work hard to move along to the line of the vision of God. We want to go to heaven. We want to see God one day. It doesn't help us meeting here at church and say hello and say praise God and sing together and shake hands together. If we do not go to heaven, we can still make other friends outside there whereby we can shake hands, whereby we can say hello and fulfill the vision out there. But the vision here, we want to go to heaven. Brethren, we want to go to heaven. Let's remind each other, mama, remind your husband that my husband, we want to go to heaven. Husband, remind your wife. Let's remind our children that the vision of God, God wants us to go to heaven. And this is the good news. And this is the gospel. And this is what we need to hear when we come to church. By the end of the day, we need to fulfill the will of God here on earth. We need to fulfill the purpose of God. Yes, living and blessing God's vision, it will enable believers to live within the limits God has set for us. God has set rules. God has set limits. When we have the vision of God, when we live by the vision of God, we'll be able to live by those limits. It's not easy to live within the limits of God. <laughs> Forget about the limits of God. The community has given us simple limits. The community has given us simple limit. Even today, I violated one of them. When I was coming to the church, the traffic light was led. I did not stop. Now, should I say, thank God, the traffic was not there, no. Very simple limit, but we cannot obey them. What about the limits God has set? God has set limits. All the simple limits, all the simple rules we cannot obey. And I don't think I'm just alone. Even this morning, I'm not sure if I'm alone. There are some be two to three people who did like me today. Oh, somebody said yes. Thank you. But remember, we should not be doing that. Those are simple limits. Now God has set limits. It's not easy to follow and abide them. We need to have God's vision. We need to know who is God. We need to know what God is doing so that we can be able to live according to those laws God has given us. When we embrace God's vision, it will enable believers to accept and live by the divine guidance. God has given divine guidance. We need to live and abide to them. Point number two, as we conclude on what should we do, allow God to transform us into a new person. Allow God to transform you into a new person. In the book of Romans 12, verse 2, 
That will be my last reading quickly. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Brethren, if we want to avoid the dangers of living without vision, we need to allow God to transform our life. Let's allow God to transform our mind. Let's allow God to transform our soul. Let's allow God to transform our spirit and renew us the way he wants us to live. I know it's not easy. Living this life in this world, it's not easy. There is a lot. We can see a lot. We can experience a lot. Probably we can even get involved in all those. It's not easy, but it's possible if we allow God to transform us. If we allow the spirit of God to transform our mind, to change our thinking, our soul and our spirit, and begin following and living the way of God, it is possible. And then we will begin experiencing part two of the scripture, of the verse we read from Proverbs 29, 18. That happy is he, happy is she. Joy will be ours. The joy of the Lord will surround us. We will be people full of joy. We will be blessed. Because the Bible is clear. When we observe the Lord. When we observe the order God has given us. Surely joy will be our way. Happiness will be part of our life. Let's allow God to transform us. When you allow God to transform you into a new person. It will enable you. It will assist you to live according to the will of God. It will enable believers not to easily adapt to the patterns of the world. It is until we are transformed. is when we can, we can stand and say no to the pattern of this world. To the things that does not please God. It's when we can say no. It's when we can say to the people who want to take us to the long route. No. It is until we are being transformed. And the spirit of God is ready to transform us. And the spirit of God is here to transform our mind. To transform our soul and our spirit. Let's allow our God to transform us. Renew our mind, our spirit and our thought. And then our thinking and decisions will be guided by God's law and rules. Remember we have said people make wrong decisions. People run for wrong conclusions. Without really considering the effect that conclusions is going to make to the people. I want to remind us today and encourage us today. Let us be transformed. Let us learn to be humble people when it comes to the things of God. We should not be rude. Remember we have said where there is no vision, people become more harsh. People become more, more rough. We should not be rough. When it comes to the things of God, when it comes to the things of God, let us learn to be humble and wait to see and wait to see what God is going to do for us. Wait to see what God has in store for us. As I conclude, let us all remember that where there is no vision, people perish. Brethren, my brother and my sister, it's a good reminder to us today. We do not want to perish. I do not want to perish. But if we do not want to perish, we should catch the vision of God. We should live by the instructions of God. Where there is no vision, people perish. And who are those people? It's you and me. Who are those people? It is you and me. It is your wife. She will perish. It is your husband. He will perish. They are your children. They will perish. They are your parents. They will perish. This is why we need to work hard for our family members. This is why we need to pray for our people. So that they do not perish. But if we embrace God's revision. And allow God to transform us. We will remain safe. From the dangers of living. Without vision. We will not die. The Lord will protect us. The community may change. The Lord will take care of us. Do not fear. The Lord is on our side. Let the community change. Let the people change. Let the system change. But the Lord will take care of us. The Lord will guide us. 
The Lord will protect us. The Holy Spirit will be on our way. Where are you supposed to say no? Just go ahead and say no. Because the Lord will be on your side. The Lord will protect you. What will it benefit you? What will it benefit me? If I say yes. And perish. In a long destination. I better say no. And probably die. But be able to see my Lord. Which is a destination of a God vision. Brethren, my brother and my sister. All you know, we should not forget. Where there is no vision, there is no direction. And where there is no direction, there is no movement. People cannot move. And where there is no movement, remember, there is no achievement. You can't achieve while you are not moving. And where there is no achievement, probably no life. There will be no life. And if there is no life, no heaven. And may the Lord help us to be aware of the dangers of living without vision. But instead, work hard to embrace and live by a godly vision and allow God to transform us. May I request we bow down our head and pray. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your speaking to us and reminding us every day and every time. When we come in the house, when we come before you, God, you speak to us, you remind us. Thank you for this good reminder that if we do not live by your vision, we will perish. Help us, Lord, in order to perish. Redeem us, O oh God. Bring us back. Transform us, Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for your people. Pray for myself. I pray for my family. I pray for my country. Lord, help us not to perish but to live by your vision. <laughs> Help us, Lord, to be transformed. Holy Spirit, come and transform our soul and our heart and our mind <laughs> that we may know you better, God, and live a joyful life. Lord, we thank you. We are humbled before you today. Whatever we do, God, help us to be contributing to, the, to your vision, to the vision you have for us, O oh God, as DPC, as an individual, Lord. I'm humbled before you, God. Pray, Lord, that you bless me, bless my family, bless my people, bless this church, bless every member, bless the leadership of this church, O oh God. Transform us, O oh God. And make us, Lord, live according to the vision. We may have our own vision, O oh God, but we pray that let your vision stand. And let us be able to follow and obey the vision you have for us, O oh God. The vision you have for this congregation. Father, we thank you. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.